Hi, you're watching a very, very special recording of Agenda Awani because this is New Malaysia. We want to talk about new things of hopes that empower us rather than the other way around. And sometimes, if you talk about certain things, you feel that we are not moving. And I don't believe in that. Agenda Awani doesn't believe in that. We believe there are many good things in our country, not only for us in Malaysia, but good things that we can share, products or services, with people outside, especially in Southeast Asia and beyond. Because of that, I'm very, very glad, because if you do your homework and if you Google, you will find that in the US alone, the home retail segment of the industry, home retail improvement, home improvement uh, segment, is about 425 billion, and that was not even this year. And is growing is the ones that beating other retail industries might not be as big as certain others but it's definitely bigger than many others the question is in malaysia how is it so i found i'm i'm very naive i should have known this a long time ago since 2005 but i recently noticed that that one store that i went to years ago in jalan duko doraman it's actually now hundreds of stores, not only in Malaysia, bukan jago kampung, tetapi almost in the majority nations in Southeast Asia. So enough of me doing the introduction. In Malaysia Baru, we want the grassroots to speak and the grassroots for retail home improvement are two gentlemen seated to my left. Closest to me is Mr. DIYs, if you don't if you have never heard this name again, you just need to go out of your house and around your neighborhood. Mr. DIY's chairman is Dato Azlam Shah Alias. Thank you so much for yes, making time, Dato. Yep. And of course, where would we be without marketing? So the vice president of marketing, Mr. Andy Chin, he's here. Um, I have a lot of questions on marketing itself. But before that, sure. I need to go sure. to Mr. Chairman, Dato Azlam. And um, I have confessed to the whole of Malaysian audience and beyond that I've been very naive. I didn't realize how powerful Mr. Dewa has been in expanding its services, not only in Malaysia, but outside. You have more than 800 now? 900 over. 900 over. Yep. Because I read during my Googling session that the target is around 1,000 yeah. for 2020. Um, well, 2020? you're talking about the region, yes, yes. we are looking around the whole region. Number. Yes. Okay. Yeah. At a time when people are worried about cost of living, whether business is doing well or good. So you are against the tsunami before I ask anything else. What gives you guys the confidence to convince not only yourself, your team members in Mr. DOI, better yet, your <laughs> investors to park the capital to do and use resources to expand when most other businesses around the world are actually, if not reducing, being cautious and holding on. Well, thank you very much for the introduction. Um, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I think we start humble and we are still humble at the moment, even though that we have a number, the number of stores have grown almost 1,000 in the region right now. Um, it is true that we started as a, in 2005 as a hardware shop but we also understand there is a niche between the, for the customers between a hardware shop and also the big shops. So there is a middle ground that people, customers would like to have certain products you know, under one roof and those are the popular home improvement products. You, know, you have mm -hmm. a hardware shop which tra traditionally handles the wood, the masonry, yeah. the, yes. the sand and so on and so forth. And then you have the big shops, the big box, and this big box also have huge items. But for us, it is a smaller format. Our model is straightforward. It is a smaller business model for a shop between 10 to 10, 20,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. And we have about uh, for 10 to 14,000 SKUs or uh, okay. storekeeping units. So those, the products that we have range from home items to electrical to mobile phones to, and so on and so forth. And these are the products uh, the customers would like to have, but the strategy here is also to deliver the promise to the customers mm -hmm. that we will always be low. 
because in Malaysia, the products has to match the expectation of the customers. We learn from the customers pretty much based on the feedback on social media. So when the customers tell us, then we analyze back what are the things that customers want. Then we work backwards and then we ask our suppliers whether you can supply this product but at the price that the customers want. So you have to be rather um, spontaneous in terms of and, and speed to market is very important to this business. Slogans are great but if they don't live up yeah. the services of the product. Yeah. So um, what I'm amazed at is quality products at affordable or even perception wise yeah. cheaper prices yeah i mean i've been in a few companies and i mean the marketing guys always want the highest margins right no no marketing guys set lower targets and so <laughs> so how do you reconcile that to the marketing strategies and targets because if i understand what datuk said about you know 10 to 15000 population is enough as a target, then even 1,000 stores are not enough. You should actually be having more and more and more. You yeah. know, it's not like near saturation point even. So, but the revenue needs to come in. The marketing perspective is very, very crucial for any retail establishment. So, how, how do you look at marketing? Because even for the media right now, I'm not fighting against any local company to survive. If I were not to end up with like my compatriots in the four newspapers, physical ones that have closed down. I'm looking at the giants of the world, Google, Facebook. They've taken about what, 70 to 80% of ADEX or advertising expenditure. So your rivals might be, you know, an e-commerce platform that sells everything like Lazada or whatever it is. Mm. So how do you look at this marketing strategy for Mr. DIY? That's a, a really good point that you made. So um, if when we when we try to develop the unique selling point of the company right we we used to mention three things right we are the largest home improvement retailer in malaysia mm -hmm. which indirectly we are actually telling the number of stores that uh, we have we offer the widest range of product with more than 14000 sku in 10 categories such as uh, household hardware electrical basically everything we, we sell everything that you need to use in the house, mm -hmm. yeah. in the office. And we also serve a lot of SME businesses, right? Okay. Whether you are a cafe owner or you run a workshop or you are tuition teachers, you can get everything from Mr. DIY. So okay. the product mix that we have, we put under one roof, is incredible. As because of this product mix setting, in fact, we cannot find any similar uh, business that are doing the same in the market or even in the world. Okay. So uh, we, I, would, I would call this a retail revolutions, which we are actually creating something new. We put a different products mix under a roof and we are creating something new to the Malaysian community. And on top of that, we offer the best price in the market, mm -hmm. right? So this is how and, and why the, the, the so-called the value home improvement retailer is going so rapidly, mm -hmm. not only in the country, but also in overseas. Of course, in the States or in Europe, in China, they have different versions. But Mr. DIY, this version is something that we specially created for the needs of Malaysian. Mm -hmm. And from time to time, we notice that these things is actually suitable for the whole Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. So when we start rowing up into other countries, we receive the same good overwhelming response. And this actually makes all these things together. So apart from that, we also just venture into e-commerce recently. Okay. E-commerce is, a, I would say, a very strategic move for, for our organizations because through e-commerce, we, we can actually attract uh, customers from different uh, demographics. We, we can use e-commerce to attract the younger generations that, mm -hmm. that have different purchase yes. behavior, right? And then we can also use e-commerce um, to start to sell things that we cannot sell in our store. Mm -hmm. So they, when we put in e-commerce and the retail business together, we actually have more potential mm -hmm. to, 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 to move the business, not only from a retail perspective, but something we call it a new retail. Uh, omni-channel retail experience okay. that Dato have just mentioned just now. And, and 
after all, because uh, when times go on, we are the market leader in the industry. A lot of things that we, we, we are doing right now might not be seen in the market usually, but we always have this, uh, this thinking that if in order to become successful, we have to keep on innovating to bring more value to our customer, to bring more saving to our customers, and also to bring um, Mr. DIY brand, a Malaysian brand, to more places around the world. Mm -hmm. I think just to add yeah. what Andy was saying, because as, uh, and also what you were saying, it, it is a homegrown brand. Many a times I meet up people, they thought it is an international brand. Mm -hmm. uh, because when you look at the shop, the physical shop, it is modern, it is well stocked, it is proper pricing, it has the right in terms of uh, advertising and also the branding. So, but from, from the marketing, it, we are trying as much as possible to entice the customers. But the important thing is also the back of house, which is how do you mm -hmm. get the products on time and making sure it is filled up on the, sh okay. on the shelves. So we do have fairly large distribution network. So we have all our um, warehouses and we do have uh, quite a fair big uh, number of uh, trucks that ply almost every day hundreds of trucks that travel every day and making sure the products on the shelf but what we are looking now is beyond that because as um, we, you were talking about uh, technology driven you're talking about entrepreneurship we are also looking in terms of robotics because sooner or later um, robotics is going to be the way things are moving, mm -hmm. in the f okay. uh, moving forward. And apart from that, you're looking in terms of lower costs, yes. in terms of your losses. Correct. You're talking probably we mm -hmm. are reducing number of um, uh, foreign labor, which is a big issue at the moment yes. and also an issue for us. And on top of that, I think it's predictable in terms of the business because um, our e-commerce have recently um, installed robotics and if that is successful then we will move forward in terms True. of the entire business. True. Hope so that's all. Uh, I have yeah. to go for the first and last break. All right. But once we are back, I want to talk about the future. Yeah. Too many times sometimes in Malaysia we like to talk about current stuff that you know obscure a bit the outlook for the future. But if you're already near one thousand stores, <laughs> well, where do you go from there? Takkanlah nak buka sepuluh aja lagi tahun depan. Mestilah ribuan. It must be in the thousands. So, if that is the case, just like riding the wave of the fourth industrial revolution with high-speed broadband, with AI, artificial intelligence, back of the house like Datuk said, if that is the mind powering all the logistics, they even know when the customer is going to buy and when the shelf is going to be empty, so what's the future, let's say, 10 years from now? You know, we didn't really going to make it for 2020 or 2020, but we have 2020. So maybe Mr. DIY is going to be the supreme example for their business to represent Malaysia at a time when we will hit fully developed nation status maybe better than Walmart or eBay. That's the question I want to pop because if you are in school right now, this might be a brand that you have to look at because you can foresee where you can feature in the supply chain, either as an employee or as a vendor. If you're in technology, if you're in anything else, you would still have to look at them because we are going to run out of natural resources dominance and we're going to have to look at things like this, products and services. So that is after this short break. Don't run away. Siapa kata Malaysia hanya jago kampung dalam industri? Siapa kata Malaysia hanya jago kampung dalam mencipta jenama untuk pergi ke persada antarabangsa? Diam tak diam, bagi saya lah. Kerana saya dulu tengok hanya satu kedai di Jalan Tokoh Doraman. Saya tahu dia makin banyak tapi saya tak tahu sudah menjengah seribu. 
Uh, itu nak angka yang cukup besar dan bukan saja di Malaysia. So I would like to continue my discussion in this agenda wani with um, Dato Azlam and Andy from Mr DIY. Mr DIY is a homegrown brand of home improvement retail that is multinational now across Southeast Asia. Um, but I want to talk about the future. Sure. Um, we keep hearing how sophisticated using robotics and automation for companies like uh, eBay, uh, yeah. Walmart. Yeah. But as an editor and journalist, I have never come across any piece of saying the same thing about our local companies. Right. But in order for Mr. DIY to go to 3,000 outlets or 5,000 outlets, you need that. And we are now sitting at the cups of high-speed network capabilities, high-speed broadband, 5G, IoT, AI, big data, blockchain even. So if everything goes well, paint us a picture for Mr. DIY five to ten years from now. Right. Because if they are in school right now taking an SPM and they just finished, maybe the next year's one, they might want to look at this and project where they want to go. I think uh, if I step back before I answer your question in terms of five to ten years from now, I'll just take back. Um, if you're a customer, if you were to go to the shop, you would like to see the shelves to be filled. Mm -hmm. So when you fill the, sh but the customers do not know behind the scenes what happens, mm -hmm. how how much um, the the volume is transacted, and how much stocks that are coming in, and how stocks have been merchandised and have been put on the shelves. Those are very critical to our business. And how we do that, it needs to be simple so that it will be able to reduce costs. And reducing costs will then be translated into the, the prices, customers' yeah. prices. So the customers will gain in overall. But when we look at the number, as we grow the number of stores, at the moment in Malaysia alone, we have about 560 stores. In, in Malaysia, but across the region we have about close to 1,000. So when we look at the numbers, the volume has grown exponentially and because of that, we have to expand our distribution networks. And once we start expanding, theref therefore we will also have to increase our manpower. But we have to start thinking, how are we going to cope this in the future? Mm -hmm. So we are also preparing for Let's uh, for the next five years in terms of if assuming that we expand another 500 stores okay. or a thousand stores, we have to expand our distribution network. So that's where we put in, uh, we had a brainstorming exercise and everybody uh, did a lot of market um, study, uh, whether, whether, whether it's here or overseas and understand what are the processes being done overseas so that we can replicate. Mm -hmm. So the fastest way to help us to do this is via robotics okay. because we know that uh, having um, foreign labour is not going to be easy for us. Okay. Um, we have um, we started with only um, e-commerce <coughs> on this year and uh, the robotics are put in place okay. and we have trialled it uh, for a number of months and it is successful. That doesn't sound cheap. Um, well, <laughs> I mean, initial cost at least. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you compare that in terms of the returns, I think it is reasonable because you, you, your number one is that you reduce the foreign labor, which the government Directly, always yeah. say up. Okay, yeah. that is a huge cost as well. But then, if you compare that with the efficiency mm -hmm. and the savings that we get, I think we have a very good returns on that. Okay. Yeah. Andy, that's also a good thing to sell. Right? I guess the robotic things. Uh, for us, it's uh, not a surprise move if we see these things Correct. internally. Because if we see um, from the journey how we are transforming the so-called old and boring hardware industry right. into what it is today, it's actually a mindset that we actually believe technology can grow us better. Okay. Right. So a few years back, when these uh, digital marketing things come in, we embrace it and we start building it. And apparently now, uh, we, we have a quite successful social media followers. We okay. have uh, around 3.3 million wow. followers, uh, considered the best uh, in terms of retail business in the mm -hmm. market. 
and it's, it works so well for us to communicate with our customers, whether it's in a new source opening, new products, or maybe uh, uh, these uh, customer service things. Then we move into e-commerce last year. So when we move into e-commerce, it's a very strategic move because a lot of people, they may ask, hey, you are running a retail store. If you run an e-commerce, are you fighting with yourself? Mm -hmm. But actually, we are seeing this in a very, very different way. Okay. Right? We think that e-commerce is something that, from a consumer perspective, we are actually creating more value to the consumer. Mm -hmm. right? um, we, like for example, if we have a lot of uh, um, small business owners that shop with us, yes. when they wanted to buy things in bulk, yeah. In the old practice, they probably have to go to this store. They mm -hmm. couldn't get, you know, they, they need 12, yeah. but they only can get six. Mm -hmm. They have to run a few stores to get everything. But now with e-commerce, they can order everything and then we send to your doorstep, right? So it's actually the technology that is helping us, not only us, but the customers to have more convenience and to transform better. And lastly, then we link to the robotic warehouse that we are currently building, testing and uh, target to launch in um, quarter two, 2020. Okay. So this is a, a, a big move for us because we, we believe that with the robotic warehouse ready, we can in easily increase the productivity by three times. And that is a huge number. Uh, recently during 11-11, that okay. we, we, we actually did one of our most successful month this month, which is earlier during 11-11. Okay. And the orders is tremendous. This is also not something that we used to uh, encounter in our usual retail business. But e-commerce is actually giving you this potential to see maybe a month's sales in a day. Yes. And that is massive, right? Correct. So without technology, without a robotic warehouse, we are unable to deliver all this product within the, uh, the given Because it's time. an extraordinary order in a single day. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. So, it's very important for us to get this ready, not only from a manpower perspective, but also on efficiency. And also when uh, the time is correct, we wanted to scale the business, we have the resources, we have the knowledge, and we have everything ready, waiting um, the new retail to hit the Southeast Asia mark. I have like 100 more questions, but I'm going to have to restrict myself to maybe one. Sure. Andy, <laughs> um, Never enough time with great people and great products. Um, B2C, you know, customers are very demanding. Yep. Yeah. Um, <coughs> one of the main hurdles for anyone, and I know because I'm a consumer myself, if the pipe burst today in the house, you know, um, those were the days you call the plumber. But now your family members say, go out and get and, <laughs> you know, just settle it. Uh, because even if you call a plumber, they might not be able to come within the hour that you want. Yep. Yeah. But then all these questions will come to mind. How do I buy the correct one? What's the size? What tools do I need to you know, put it in place? So virtual reality and augmented reality that is done more in like the oil and gas services industry where they can remotely you know, configure before the actual physical exercise is done. Would that be coming to the picture? Um. Yes, that's a good question. So um, we also start to sell things like furnishing. It's a, a fast-growing uh, category in Mr. DIY. So furnishing in, in furnishing, we have things like curtains. Mm -hmm. We have things like small furniture. And with this product, actually, if you are, you can, you know, scan your house and mm -hmm. show how the patterns looks mm -hmm. like. We actually have potential to, to explore this kind of technology. But to answer your questions on how do they fix pipe and how do we educate the consumers, actually DIY we have these things called cool hacks, right? So um, because we understand that our product sometimes is technical, yeah. mostly is to the B2B market. In fact, we are targeting B2C market. So the question is how do they pick up these things mm -hmm. and then to fix it, right? Mm -hmm. So time to time, we actually have a big production team ourselves. Of course, not as big as Astro, but right. <laughs> but um, so we come up with different different idea. We try to understand what are the common problems that a house will face, mm -hmm. and then we we will we, we'll recommend that with a solution and yes. also with our product. Mm -hmm. So all these videos actually goes very well with our brand. So when we push these things, like for example, how do you change a pipe? How mm -hmm. do you change a door lock? Mm -hmm. Or maybe, or even during Christmas, we can give you recommendation. How do you buy gift? 
below five ringgit from Mr. Okay. DIY. Okay. So all these suggestions and all these recommendations from our team mm -hmm. are pushed to the consumer. Okay. They may not react directly, mm -hmm. but in future, if, if they have a damaged door lock in their house, they Google it, then they will okay. see the recommendation yeah. from us. Mm -hmm. So in, in, in fact, we are not only selling product, but we are actually educating the community mm -hmm. how to have better life mm -hmm. with cheaper costs and good uh, value of money. Okay. Yeah. I think just to add, sure. we, we recognize the fact in terms of um, the customers are also the young. And today's customers, particularly the young, they don't have the DIY skills. So mm -hmm. last three years, we've been working very closely with Indian Layer and because they adopted quite a number of schools. Okay. So we have been doing that in, in, in a contest with the schools in terms of creating products from waste using the DIY stuff. Okay. And it, it was remarkably successful mm -hmm. and the, the students just love it. Mm -hmm. So what we're trying to do now is to create a culture back because I'm a DIY person myself way back many, many years tell, ago. Yeah. <laughs> so but when I ask people um, whether the children do DIY stuff, they don't yeah. because they, they hire people because Correct. it's so cheap. Yeah. But over a period of time, labor is going to be expensive. Yeah. Changing a, a pipe may be mm -hmm. very costly. Mm -hmm. You know, It can be a simple project. Mm -hmm. It can be only 10 ringgit. But they but charge per hour. <laughs> yes, they charge. <laughs> it costs hundreds. So we don't have that luxury anymore. So we're now trying to educate our children, particularly the school children, work with because it, it creates team building, mm -hmm. it creates mm -hmm. um, the mind, you know, mm -hmm. inquisitive, and at the end of the day, you get a product out of it. Mm -hmm. And it went very well this year. I think out of 42 schools, 10 schools came in, and three schools got the top three prizes. So look at them now, if you haven't before. <laughs> they might be your future employers, they might be your future business partner, because this business, from America right up until Southeast Asia, is growing despite the apprehension of economic growth around the world. I don't have time to ask where they're going to get their money to fuel their expansion everything. I know they're not going to answer it anyway. The <laughs> sexy Google question is whether they're going to list on Bursa. This studio is at Bursa Malaysia, so we'll keep that for another episode because the more interesting question is, do you know that Mr. DIY is flying the proud Malaysian flag not lima bucu, tetapi the right number of bucu, the right number of jalo, more and more internationally, and we hope to see them in the more developed nation, like in Europe and America, beating even the Walmarts of the world at their own game, proudly fueled by the Malaysian ingenuity. Thank you so much. This is Agen Nawani, and I'll see you soon. Thank you again. Thank you.